What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another Pokemon Sword and Shield DLC video. Yesterday I uploaded one talking about uh, Galarian Slowking and I had a bit of a mistake in that video if you didn't read the comments. Uh, the ability does not affect your opponents, it is only your side of the field. So any comments I made regarding uh, <laughs> regarding uh, getting rid of a speed boost in your opponent's side of the field are null and void. However, you can still use it for the... Um, things I mentioned like removing an icy wind drop or an intimidate drop from your side of the field, but that is not what we're talking about today. Today we're talking about something really, really important to the future of VGC, and that is the returning legendaries and some other Pokemon. Um, as of right now, we only know about returning legendary Pokemon for certain and a couple of other ones. Uh, however, there was a data mine that did reveal that there were some other Pokemon who had their code in the game already. So. Just no going forward, this contains some spoilers. I'm not sure if people really care about competitive spoilers, but I just wanted to let you guys know before we get into it. But yeah, with that out of the way, do me a favor, why don't you comment down below and tell me what you think is going to be the most notable move set change uh, in the DLC. Uh, and also leave a like in the video if you enjoyed at any point in time, because every like helps. And go ahead and subscribe, enter our notifications, whatever you want to do. So yeah. Here I have a uh, Smogon thread where they've compiled some returning Pokemon, and while these Pokemon are broken down into Smogon tiers, uh, they do show the uh, new move pool changes. And also I'm going to show you guys an image re real quick here. Here are the Pokemon that were data mined to have shown to have their code in the game. As you can see, it's all the Ultra Beast, Legendaries, and some other uh, previous gen Pokemon. And I'm pretty sure I've seen the majority of these in trailers already, so I don't think many people care too much. There's my boy Absol over there. I'm still waiting on Honchkrow to get data mined, but I don't think he will, unfortunately. Uh, so we're going to be talking about some moveset changes. As you can see here, uh, we're going to be starting with uh, some non-legendaries and getting down to the legendaries. Uh, this list is basically just some Pokemon that they saw for like anything goes. And I think there are some other uh, lists of moveset changes here. Oh yeah, returning Pokemon. So we can just... Here, here is like the list of returning Pokemon. Um, I want to show, yeah, these are just yeah new move pool additions. So we'll go ahead and go through the list. Uh, so starting off with Blaziken. Blaziken is a Gen three starter. Uh, it's known for her being part of Blaze Bish, which was uh, a bit essentially you lead off with uh, Bisharp with Defiant and Blaziken with Speed Boost. And Blaziken is very, very difficult to deal with once it has uh, a Speed Boost up and it has a pretty high attack stat. Uh, the fact that it had high jump kick as its main form of fighting stab uh, was probably what nerfed it quite a bit, but as you can see here, it has access to close combat now, which is actually pretty threatening. Because before, if you made a correct call, you could get that thing to high jump kick into a protect and take a massive amount of damage, but no longer, uh, it's going to be able to click close combat. Now, I feel like some people will continue to use high jump kick uh, in singles however in doubles i feel like you can't really afford to run high jump kick over close combat the base power difference is literally only 10 uh, so you're probably going to want to go with close combat to make sure you're not taking too much damage from them switching in a ghost or uh, protecting also u-turn is pretty huge u-turn will allow this thing to be a decent uh thing on lead you'll be able to <laughs> You, I mean, like, you can run a couple of things. I'm not sure if you would run Protect and U-Turn on the same set, uh, because Protect is mostly meant to get your speed boost up um, and, you know, defend from incoming attacks. However, U-Turn would reset that entirely. So maybe on, like, a Banded Blaziken set, you could run U-Turn. That'd be pretty huge. Next up, we have Dialga. This thing is going to be more... Uh, relevant to future formats where they allow restricted Pokemon. If you're not aware, um, restricted formats allow for box legendaries where uh, legendaries like Landorus and Naganadel are allowed in just regular formats like 2018 and uh, 2015, where 2016 and 2019 were like Giratina and Groudon. Uh, that's just a good way to remember, like the box legendaries are restricted to restricted formats. <laughs> so yeah, uh, Breaking Swipe I think is pretty cool. Uh, Dialga has always been a bulkier Pokemon, a, a bit slower of a Pokemon in restricted formats. Uh, I think it's pretty nice that it gets that move. Heavy Slam, I don't think is going to make the biggest difference for Dialga. It's mostly a special attacker. Um, and yes, it would be able to hit things for some, some pretty decent damage. If we look at its attack stat... Dialga. Uh, Dialga has a decent attack stat, 120, but its 150 special attack stat is a lot better in my opinion. Um, and also, 
we know that Xerneas takes that hit pretty well considering their weights are pretty similar. So I don't think it's going to be the biggest deal. Body press is interesting because um, it didn't really have too great a fighting stab. I believe he had to run close combat prior. Let me go and switch over to the anything goes ladder so I can actually see <laughs> so I can actually see um, what I need to see here. Yeah, before I had like Aura Sphere, Brick Break, and I believe Focus Blast. It did not actually, but uh, no one really ran that really. Um, it, like I guess, I guess uh, you could use its pretty high defense stat to defend against things like Stack Attack a bit better in the restricted format. But I don't think it's gonna make the biggest difference. Aura Sphere is probably just a bit better because it has 150 special attack. Uh, next up, we're gonna skip over Genesect since it's not ever gonna be legal in VGC. Uh, we have never had a format where mythicals are allowed. Giratina. So Giratina gets Phantom Force, we already knew that, uh, Breaking Swipe, Body Slam, and Poltergeist. I think Poltergeist is actually a pretty huge buff for Giratina. Well, like before it had Shadow Force, right, which is essentially better Phantom Force. If we look at Giratina, if I could spell it right, if we look at Giratina, uh, it had access to Shadow Force, which is just a buffed uh, Phantom Force at 120 base power. Uh, that was a pretty strong move, however, it did take two turns, and you're able to switch in Pokemon if you really wanted to. Uh, now, it has access to Poltergeist, which is actually a pretty huge uh, buff. Poltergeist has really, really high base power, considering um, <laughs> considering uh, that it's a one-turn move, and I really wish that it would show me the base power. I believe it's 110 or something, but uh, it only works if the Pokemon has an item. That's an interesting buff for if you don't want to run Shadow Force, but I feel like you're probably better off with Shadow Force in the end, since Poltergeist does have a chance to miss, and Pokemon will be consuming their items a lot. Uh, so it's not as reliable. So it is a buff in that sense that you have another option for a stab uh, physical ghost move, but you're probably better off with uh, Phantom Force in the end or Shadow Force. Groudon getting Heavy Slam is pretty huge. Uh, it now has a really, really strong Steel type move. I believe previously it did get something like Iron Head. Uh, however, Groudon didn't really pack it too often because we were running Primals and stuff. Yeah, it did get Iron Head and Iron Tail. Uh, now that it, have, it has Heavy Slam, that's actually pretty huge. Um, it has a pretty powerful move to hit Fairy types like the Tapus. Uh, however, I'm not certain if people are really going to run it. It already has like a decent amount of coverage that it wants to run. It already has trouble picking moves. Uh, it has to choose between <laughs> it has to choose between um, Swords Dance, Precipice Blades is o is always going to be on that move set. Sometimes people run Stomping Tantrum uh, because it's so powerful into a Protect. Because Precipice Blades, if it if it fails in either Pokemon, then you're able to get the Stomping Tantrum boost. So. That, that's interesting. I think Heat Crash is a really, really good addition. However, now that we don't have Primal Groudon, it isn't as potent as it would have been. Primal Groudon with Heat Crash would have been a menace. Uh, however, it is pretty cool that it gets a new Fire Stab move, and because it's coming off of its weight, it's mostly going to be 120 base power, which I think is pretty cool. But yeah, uh, Scorching Sands is pretty cool. However, it's not likely that people are going to be running Special Groudon, since its Special Attack is only 100 and its Physical Attack is 150. If... Press, if um, What's it called? If the Primal Groudon got that, then that would be cool. It would be pretty cool because it has 150 special attack. So, unfortunately, no, we don't get to use that. <laughs> I really wish uh, that he got it earlier, though. Ho-Oh, -Oh, uh, Fire Spin, Imprisoned, Flare Blitz, Dual Wing Beat. Nothing really huge here. Dual Wing Beat is interesting in case you want to... Actually, no, there's like no use in Dual Wing Beat. I mean, you avoid the Brave Bird recoil, but there isn't really anything huge there. I guess Imprisoned is cool for stopping Tailwind, but... Um... I don't think that's going to be too huge. Flare Blitz is actually kind of cool. Flare Blitz is pretty cool because now you have another option over Sacred Fire, but I think Sacred Fire is pretty much always going to be your better option. Kyogre gets Heavy Slam. That is useless. There isn't many things Kyogre wants to hit with Heavy Slam. I guess now it has a way of hitting Xerneas for super effective. Uh, however, Kyogre's attack stat is 100, I believe, so it's not that huge. Now we're getting into the big boys. This guy's going to be legal pretty much immediately, I believe. Uh, Landorus and Landorus T. Now, we haven't confirmed that Landorus T is in the game uh, because we haven't seen a looking glass, and that's how you switch it over to the Therian form. But overall, it gets uh, Self Destruct, Scary Face, Weather Ball, Sand Tomb, Body Slam, Endure, and Scorching Sands. Now, Scorching Sands doesn't really matter too much for regular Landorus because regular Landorus already was able to run um, Earth Power, which is a stronger version of Scorching Sands considering its moveset. So if you don't know, Landorus Incarnate, it had the ability Sheer Force, which is what it's going to be running if uh, you're running it at all, since uh, we also got 
officially confirmed, this isn't even a leak, uh, the ability to switch from the regular ability to the hidden ability. So now you can switch over to hidden ability Landris, which means it's going to be running Sheer Force, which is terrifying because it gets Sheer Force Earth Power. It gets, uh, what else does it get? It gets Sheer Force Focus Blast. Not that it really matters too much. People don't really run Focus Blast on this thing. It gets Sheer Force Psychic. Uh, it gets so many Sheer Force Boosts. Rock Slide gets Sheer Force Boosted. A lot of things get Sheer Force Boosted on this Pokemon. So uh, if you have the option between Earth Power and Scorching Sands, considering Scorching Sands is like 70 base power, uh, yeah, you're going to want to run Earth Power because they're essentially the same move, but Earth Power is stronger. So yeah. Uh, I'm mostly concerned about Landorus being able to Dynamax because Landorus Therian is going to be a very threatening Dynamax. Look at this. So Landorus Therian, its main issue prior was the fact that it didn't have a great flying stab option. It had to run fly, right? And people would run fly with fly and EMZ. But now essentially you have three turns to click max airstream with this Pokemon. On top of that, it also gets access to superpower, which is good for max knuckle. Uh, max Quake off of Earthquake. There are a lot of things that this Pokemon can do that are pretty threatening, and uh, I'm interested to see where the format takes it. I think that we've introduced enough things where Landers Therian won't be busted. I think Milotic being a Pokemon that's introduced is going to be good. I'm pretty certain that Galarian Articuno, who has competitive, which will get boosted because uh, it'll get a special attack boosted because of the Intimidate drop, uh, I'm pretty certain it's still going to have ice coverage, so it'll be able to one shot Landers. Uh, I would just hope that we have Pokemon that outspeed it. Uh, more reliably. But yeah, Landers T, huge threat in the format. Lugia, uh, it has Imprison, Air Slash, Hurricane, Dual Wing Beat, and Scale Shot, and Helping Hand. I think probably Hurricane is going to be the biggest thing. I know a lot of people are big fans of Aeroblast. Aeroblast does have that high critical hit ratio, I believe. Um, I'm not too familiar with the Ubers, especially the less common ones in uh, VGC. So yeah, Aeroblast 100. Uh, I guess Hurricane is technically stronger. Maybe we'll see some Kyogre plus Lugia in the future formats, uh, but I don't think it's going to be the biggest thing. I guess Helping Hand is pretty huge because you could do like Kyogre plus Lugia where the Kyogre protects turn one. You Tailwind up with Lugia and then you go for uh, Helping Hand Water Spout. That could be pretty threatening, uh, but overall I don't think these are the biggest these are the biggest uh, buffs for Lugia overall. Naganadel. Pin Missile, Endure, Toxic Spikes, Giga Impact, Swift. Why are they giving it all like the garbage moves? Pin Missile, Endure, Swift, <laughs> Assurance, Cross Poison, Hex, Breaking Swipe, Spikes, Dragon Dance, and Dual Wing Beat. Um, I guess they really gave it like no good special attacks. And look at Naganadel. Look at Naganadel's stats. Naganadel is a special attacker. It's got 127 special attack. And they decided, hey, let's give it Dual Wing Beat. <laughs> yeah, Naganadel... Um, not too many buffs this gen. It's mostly for singles that it's getting buffed because it now has spikes, now it has toxic spikes. I guess breaking swipe is an interesting option if you want to run a support Naganadel, but I don't really see that being the best option considering it's pretty frail overall, 73 in every defense and HP, so I don't think it's going to be the best Pokemon. Uh, Palkia, breaking swipe, body slam, heavy slam, body press, dual wing beat, scale shot. I mean, heavy slam matters more for Dialga overall, but this now also has a way of hitting... Uh, it also now has a way of hitting Xerneas for super effective. Breaking Swipe is pretty interesting because it can get bulkier that way. It's able to lower the attack stat. Um, not really too big of uh, buffs because, once again, this thing's a special attacker and the only things it got were physical attacks, so nothing too big there. Feromosa, I think, got a huge buff here. Uh, and it has access to Assurance, Endure, Close Combat, Coaching, and Skitter Smack. Now, Skitter Smack doesn't matter too much. It's basically just worse lunge. However, Close Combat is huge because previously it was also a Pokemon that had to click High Jump Kick. So no longer do you have to <laughs> worry about uh, missing your High Jump Kick or, you know, High Jump Kicking into a Protect. This thing is going to be able to click Close Combat. Lower base power, but only by 10, and it's still a really powerful attack. So Feromos, a huge buff right there. Rayquaza, Breaking Swipe, Hydro Pump, Cosmic Power, and Meteor Beam Scale Shot. I think these are excellent buffs, to be honest. Breaking Swipe is pretty good because Rayquaza is one of the faster legendaries. Or actually, no, I'm thinking Mega Rayquaza. I believe regular Rayquaza is pretty middling speed. Yeah, 95. Well, that's faster than like Groudon and Kyogre, so I guess that that's pretty big. Um, but Meteor Beam is pretty cool. It gives it a... Uh, a rock type option that's pretty strong on the special side and also boosted special attack i think hydro pump is kind of cool because previously people were running like i believe it got water pulse which was the interesting option it's previous yeah it was like waterfall water pulse uh surf so now you can run hydro pump if you really want to i don't think it's going to matter too much i guess it's a better option for one shotting um groudon because you can hit it on the special side uh and also with the 
ability it has. It ignores the sun, so it's not going to get decreased in power. So I guess that's a pretty big buff to it. Cosmic power is interesting. Scale shot, I don't think is the biggest buff because people likely run dragon dance instead. Or maybe they will run like swords dance scale shot because that's essentially just a dragon dance in an attack. Xerneas, it got Draining Kiss, Smart Strike, Body Slam, Endure, Play Rough, Misty Explosion, and Swift. Misty Explosion, I don't think is going to matter too much, because in a restricted format, Xerneas is your best friend. Do not explode it. Draining Kiss, I think, is pretty huge. Draining Kiss is a massive buff. If we look at other Pokemon that get Draining Kiss, um, if we look at, like, Magearna, I know Magearna isn't legal, but Magearna is a very bulky Pokemon that uses Draining Kiss quite a lot, because it recovers 75% of the damage dealt. Now, hear me out. The one issue with Xerneas in previous formats was the lack of reliable recovery. And while Draining Kiss is a pretty weak special attack, it's only 50 base power, keep in mind that Xerneas is boosting its, uh, its special attack, its special defense, and speed by 2 in one turn. And if you get like 50% off uh, on that Pokemon, then you're going to end up having to take a, <laughs> a Fairy Aura boosted plus 2 stab, uh, what's it called, Draining Kiss and they heal 75% of the damage they deal to you. That is that is a massive buff. Xerneas just got a, a massive buff there. Um, it finally got Play Rough, which I think is pretty funny. Uh, it now has a better physical move pool if you decide to run that, but I wouldn't suggest it. I, I definitely wouldn't suggest it, but yeah, that's something interesting. Uh, Xerneas now has a very, very strong Draining Kiss. Eveltal, Swift, Payback, Body Slam, Endure, Dual Wing Beat, and Lash Out. I think Dual Wing Beat is probably the biggest buff to this thing. The thing with Eveltal is it's typically a physical attacker because it does get access to like knockoff and sucker punch. So if we look at Eveltal, Eveltal, 131 attack, 131 special attack. That's, you know, it's pretty good, but uh, its best moves are like knockoff, sucker punch, um, etc. Like sometimes you'll see some other moves. I saw Rock Slide once, which is terrifying, uh, but it likes to be a assault vest attacker. So usually it'll be like mixed. Like, sometimes they'll run, like, minus speed nature, uh, and your typical flying stab is Oblivion Wing. But now if you want to go, like, banded, if you want to be, like, a choice band Eveltal, uh, that's actually pretty threatening with Dual Wing Beat, because before it didn't really get any good flying stab uh, on the physical side. If we look at its flying stab, it's pretty much just, yeah, I remember running Power Herb um, Sky Attack once, and that was a horrible option. I was really bad at the game back then. Uh, but now that it gets Dual Wing Beat... It's, it's, it's got a pretty strong uh, physical option, which isn't too bad for it. I would have preferred Brave Bird, personally, but that's just me. I like I like Eveltal quite a bit. Zygarde, 10%. Zygarde and Zygarde, complete. Swift, Payback, Breaking Swipe, Body Slam, Reversal, Endure, High Horsepower, Scorching Sand, Skitter Smack, and Scale Shot. Personally, I think the only thing that matters here is Breaking Swipe. Uh, Zygarde, complete, was mostly known for going for coils and such. Um, and... Yeah, like it, it was mostly going for coil and clicking moves that were like debuffing you. Like you would get, uh, they would get like a light screen up with Finny. They would just do so much to lower your damage output so that Zygarde Complete would slowly wear you down. Because it doesn't have the highest attack stat. I believe Zygarde Complete has like base 100. Double check here. Yeah, Zygarde has base 100 attack so now that it has breaking swipe it has a better option for lowering your damage output so i think that's pretty threatening um beyond that scale shot doesn't matter too much scorching sands doesn't matter too much uh, and now we're getting into some ultra beasts so celesteela self-destruct body slam endure mega horn cosmic power grassy glide and steel roller uh, i think with the format we're going into we might see some steel roller celesteela but it's more likely they'll keep running their oh actually no no, because Heavy Slam can't hit Dynamax Pokemon. They might start running Steel Roller because there's going to be terrain up pretty much all the time and Steel Roller is super strong. Um, Cosmic Power is pretty gross because now <laughs> you can boost both your defenses at once. You can click Cosmic Power, Leech Seed, Protect, and maybe Steel Roller is your final move. That's really gross. I don't want to see that. Uh, Celesteela, pretty big buffs there. Uh, Cresselia, Power Swap, Guard Swap, Body Slam, Cosmic Power, Stored Power, and Expanding Force. Uh, not the biggest buffs. I mean, Cosmic Power is going to be annoying to deal with, because once again, it's just going to be a very stally Pokemon, but we have enough Wall Breakers. I think that Urshifu Dark is pretty much the anti-Cresselia, so I'm, I'm really glad that we have that now. DNC is not legal. Uh, Kartana, Solar Blade, Screech, Endure, and everyone's worst nightmare here, Grassy Glide. I think that's going to be really threatening. Uh, here's the thing about Kartana in Dynamax format. Something that people don't realize. Dynamax format has a rule. If it can airstream, then it must. 
Cartana can airstream, air release. <laughs> so it can speed boost, right? Uh, and because it's speed boosting, it's also getting an attack boost when it gets a KO with beast boost. Here's the thing that's really scary about that. Cartana, previously, its best priority move was vacuum wave. Its best priority move was vacuum wave. And I remember specifically, it was at like, um, it was at like Madison Regionals on stream. There was this dude and he was running Sash Cartana. And to ensure he won the Sash Cartana 1v1, he would... Uh, he would always go for a sacred sword to get uh, his opposing his opponent's Kartana to one HP, and then he would click Vacuum Wave uh, as a tech move because it would always go first. Now Kartana can run Grassy Glide. The only difference is you have to double up on your grass types, but I think with Tapu Bulu and Rillaboom uh, being in the game, and the fact that Rain is pretty good uh, with grass types, I, I don't think people are really gonna fear that too much. Yeah, Kartana is gonna be really really strong, and I'm really concerned about it. Nihiligo, Rock Slide, Rock Tomb, Cross Poison, Hex, Body Slam, Endure, Corrosive Gas, and Meteor Beam. Really, I just see Meteor Beam being a strong option here. Nihiligo also there already has a uh, pretty high uh, speed stat, so what you can do is probably run the typical Power Herb Meteor Beam set uh, because Power Herb will make it go off in uh, will make it go off in one turn. And Meteor Beam will also boost its super super high special attack set, and it's also uh, a much better stab rock move than it had before because they were running power gem which is only 80 base power uh, honestly that's a pretty big buffer in a Hiligo, and I like it quite a bit Amistar pin missile liquidation meteor beam I think the only thing that matters here really is meteor beam stack attack now stack attack is one that we have to be really really concerned about uh, stack attack is gonna be able to Dynamax because everything that isn't named Zacian Zamazenta or uh, <laughs> or um, that third one Eternatus is able to Dynamax if we look at stack attacka, it has a decent HP stat at 61, or it's, I guess it's kind of low, but that's set off by, or that's offput by its stupidly high defenses. This thing being able to Dynamax is a menace. I was running calcs with my buddy Atrix the other day, and as it turns out, this thing is able to take a lot of stab ground moves when Dynamax, despite it being times four uh, super effective. So be very cautious of this Pokemon when facing it. Uh, it recently got Mega Kick, Body Slam, Endure, Heavy Slam, Heat Crash, so now it has a move to deal with uh, Ferrothorn that is not superpower. Uh, body Press, which is terrifying, oh my god, it has a better fighting move now. Uh, high Horsepower, I don't think that matters too much. Meteor Beam doesn't matter too much, and Steel Roller is going to be huge. Uh, people might start running Steel Roller over Heavy Slam once more because uh, Steel Roller is able to hit Dynamax Pokemon where Heavy Slam is not. Tapu Bulu, Mega Punch, Rest, Revenge, Bullet Seed, Power Swap, Guard Swap, Endure, Close Combat, Stored Power, Play Rough, uh, Darkest Lair at High Horsepower, and it also gets Terrain Pulse, Grassy Glide, and Misty Explosion. I think Grassy Glide is probably the biggest buff for Tapu Bulu here, but even <laughs> even cooler than that, it now gets Play Rough. Play Rough Tapu Bulu. Now, let me, let me show you Tapu Bulu real quick. Tapu Bulu is the strongest physical attacker of the Tapus. It did not have a stab fairy move until now. Or it, it did not have a stab physical fairy move. People would run like Dazzling Gleam if they wanted a fairy move. But now, uh, this thing is able to hit dragons, finally. The fairy is finally able to beat dragons. Because uh, dragon types would typically run poison jab to hit fairies anyways. And this thing is super weak to that. Uh, yeah, coming off a 130 attack, it's just barely stronger than Rillaboom, who has 125 base attack. So while you're trading off the fact that uh, Rillaboom has you know, fake out, U-turn, etc. Uh, Tapu Bulu gets you fairy stab, so it's kind of 50-50 on which one you want. I'm personally going to be a Tapu Bulu stan. I love Tapu Bulu. He is the best Tapu. Uh, close combat is pretty huge because uh, that's just a really, really good fighting stab, uh, or just a really good fighting option. Uh, you can max knuckle with this thing now. Uh, I like it a lot. Darkest Lair, it's a good buff because now it has a dark option. Uh, before, I believe it had Brutal Swing, which isn't too strong. Yeah, I like this thing quite a bit. I don't think Terrain Pulse is going to be very huge for it. Tapu Fini, uh, Rest, Dive, Guard Spot, <laughs> Guard Spot, Guard Swap, Draining Kiss, Endure, Stored Power, Play Rough, Terrain Pulse, Flip Turn, Misty Explosion. Flip Turn could be interesting. Sometimes you see Flip Turn Pre Marina. I could definitely see like Flip Turn Tapu Fini plus Colossal being a thing. That'd be interesting. Um, actually, yeah, that'd be really interesting because Tapu Fini doesn't have a terrible speed set. Um, Draining Kiss is pretty huge. It's just a nice recovery option for Tapu Fini. Uh, beyond that, there isn't too much here. I think Misty Explosion is pretty scary because it is uh, one of two Pokemon that can actually click uh, Misty Explosion uh, without having to set up Misty Terrain first. I mean, like, they can click Misty Explosion, but this thing has double base power on it, which is pretty strong. 
Uh, beyond that, I don't think it... I, I think it got the worst of the buffs between the Tapus. Terrain Pulse is pretty huge, I guess. Because uh, Terrain Pulse is... Here, let me show you. Terrain Pulse... Or I guess I have to go to, like, Venusaur, who actually gets it. Venusaur. Terrain Pulse. Uh, it's 50 base power, which turns into 100 base power and becomes the type of terrain that you're in. So, I guess over Moonblast, you could maybe run Terrain Pulse Tapu Finny, but I think Moonblast is more reliable, especially with the special attack drops. Tapu Coco. Uh, it now gets play rough as well, which is terrifying because it's super fast. I think that's really cool. Physical Tapu Coco is finally becoming viable, and that makes me happy. Uh, it has Rest, Swift Assurance, Eerie Impulse. Eerie Impulse is a major buff because support Tapu Coco was already a thing with like screens and stuff. So Eerie Impulse is a major buff in my opinion. You can actually use that to great effect with it since it has a super high speed stat and pretty good bulk. Endure, Close Combat, Max Knuckle, a way of beating Ferrothorn. I like it. Stored Power, Play Rough. I already went over that. Terrain Pulse, not going to matter too much for Tapu Coco because it already has better moves in terrain. Rising Voltage. This is the one. This is the one. So Rising Voltage is the move for Tapu Koko. Uh, let me go to the other Pokemon that has Rising Voltage and Electric Terrain. Pink Urchin. Rising Voltage. So that's a 140 base power Rising Voltage in terrain. Uh, and this is coming off of 91 Special Attack. You know, you know pretty good. It's, it's, a, it's a bulky Pokemon. 15 speed. But now compare that to Tapu Koko, who will also be able to click this move. And... Also probably be able to run Modest, because 130 is pretty high for a speed stat. Uh, coming off of 95 special attack, and also having fairy coverage. I'm going to say that Tapu Koko is probably going to overtake Pink Urchin. You know, that, that might be a hot take. That might be a hot take, but uh, I'm going to say Tapu Koko is probably better. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be scary to face. Uh, also, Coco Raichu is terrifying, because they're so fast, and they're both going to be able to click that move. Tapu Lele. Rest, Charm. Charm is pretty cool. Uh, power Swap, Guard Swap, Speed Swap, Psycho Cut, Endure, Future Sight, Stored Power, Play Rough, Terrain Pulse, Expanding Force, and Misty Explosion. Honestly, the only thing that I can really see mattering here are um, Charm and Expanding Force. Charm is pretty cool as a support option. You know, cut their attack in half. It has a decent speed at 95. But Expanding Force. Oh boy, I love this move. So if you don't know, if you're new to the channel, I have been running this team recently that has just been taking lives, and it's Indeedee Male plus Thievil, because Indeedee Male has Psychic Surge and has access to Expanding Force in uh, in Terrain, which is 1.5 times power in Terrain and hits both foes. Thievil is able to run uh, Fake Tears, and also run a Psychic Seed, and also, that's Psychic DMZ. And also run a Psychic Seed with Umburden, and it becomes pretty bulky when you max out the HP and the speed. So you can combo these two into each other. Uh, Thieval also gets cool coverage, or cool options like Snarl or Beat Up to activate like a Terrakion or something. But these two combo together are super, super threatening, especially when you put a Choice Scarf on the Ndidi. So, here's the thing. Ndidi gets Dazzling Gleam, but it doesn't hit Dark types very hard because it's Ndidi, and it only has 105 special attack. Let's go ahead and replace this Ndidi with Tapu Lele. Tapu Lele also gets Expanding Force, so let's just keep that in mind. But it also gets Moonblast, it gets a Stab Dazzling Gleam. It's going to get Mystical Fire this gen, I believe. Does it get Mystical Fire? I'm pretty certain it does. It does not get Mystical Fire, but I don't think I care too much. Um, but still, like it's it's so strong. It's so strong because we're going from that 105 to a 130 base special attack with better overall bulk than Ndidi. So that's really, really cool. I'm terrified of this thing. This thing's going to be really scary to face in the format. Uh, it's essentially probably like the most powerful expanding force user, I guess, behind Alakazam, but only by a little bit. 135 special attack, but still, like that's, that's terrifying. I, I love that. Um, I, I like using broken Pokemon. It's a fun time, like when you just have a team of wall breakers. Thunderous and Thunderous T. I think the biggest buff to these guys, you know, besides Rising Voltage, Lash Out, etc. Eerie Impulse is pretty huge, to be honest. I think the biggest buff to these guys is actually the fact that um, they get Defiant now. So, here's the thing. Like I said, we now have the Ability Capsules. So, if we look at Thunderous, or the uh, Ability Patches, or what they're officially called, and Tornadus. Uh, I think Tornadus... No, not Tornadus is Ugly Cousin. Tornadus. I think Tornadus will still run Prankster, just because it's able to run 
priority Tailwind, which is probably the most powerful thing that you could have in this format. Uh, but Thunderous, while it could run Prankster for like Thunder Wave, etc., or Nasty Plot, it's probably going to run Defiant because this thing gets access to Max Airstream now. So if you want to run Fly, Wild Charge, Superpower, and Protect, that's pretty threatening. Because you can, you can just like slap a life orb on this thing, you can't intimidate it, it has a pretty good attack set at 115 and a really good speed at 111, just slap a jolly nature on that thing and you're ready to go, you're going to take lives dude, you're going to send them back to their part time job at Applebee's, imagine, imagine being, uh, <laughs> imagine being an Incineroar, right, an Incineroar just comes in and goes, yeah I'm going to intimidate this thing, and then you give it plus one and they get one shot by life orb superpower, that's terrifying dude, uh, I feel like Thunderous is probably going to be more defiant than, uh, than Prankster, and uh, Tornadus is probably going to be more Prankster than Defiant, because uh, honestly I feel like this thing does a lot better as a, a Prankster Pokemon. And also that special attack is pretty good, like they both have 125, right? But I think this guy enjoys it a bit more. Alright, uh, next up we have some returning Pokemon that, you know, they might be good, they might not be, uh, and these are for some singles. Uh, Absol, Air Slash, Close Combat, not really much to say there, Close Combat is pretty good fighting stab, better than superpower. Aerodactyl getting dual wing beat and psychic fangs is pretty huge. Also dragon dance, they finally gave Aerodactyl dragon dance. Uh, I think that's going to be pretty cool. Aerodactyl has always been a favorite Pokemon of mine, but it's super frail and it's hard to use in VGC. Dual wing beat is probably the best uh, buff they could have given it. Agron, body press is huge. Body press is pretty huge because it can use its massive defense stat uh, to hit things. Uh, beyond that, crunch high horsepower, steel roller is pretty big. Um, the rest are pretty unnotable. Altaria, False Swipe, Fire Spin, Breaking Swipe, Dual Wing Beat, nothing too big there. Archeops, uh, Dual Wing Beat I guess is pretty big, but it's not ever really going to be that viable in VGC. Uh, nothing too good for Armaldo here, I guess Shadow Claw is interesting. Articuno gets Brave Bird finally, oh my god, uh, but it's <laughs> but it's not very good coming off its low attack set. This thing is more of a special attacker. Air Slash is pretty cool, uh, Weather Ball is pretty cool, however it's probably going to be worse than its uh, counterpart that we're going to get soon. Triple Axle and Dual Wing Beat is interesting. What's Articuno's physical attack stat? Why are they buffing this thing so much? Yeah, um, you're not going to run Triple Axle Articuno. It's just not good. 85 attack, that's pretty lame. Audino. Um, I don't see this thing being too good. It didn't really get anything that buffs its moveset in the way that you'd want to buff it. Like, uh, I guess Draining Kiss would be interesting for Audino, but it didn't get it. Uh, Aurorus. Weather Ball. That's pretty huge, actually. Uh, Mud Shot, Rock Blast, Body Slam, Icicle Spear, Meteor Beam. I think Meteor Beam is pretty good for Aurorus. You probably run like a Rock Polish Meteor Beam set if you wanted to, and that'd be pretty threatening. Azelf. Uh, it gets Expanding Force. It also got Drain Punch, Psycho Cut, Draining Kiss, Metronome, tri -Tech. It, it got some pretty good moves. Uh, play Rough is actually pretty big for it. Uh, it allows it to hit Dark Types now, which I think is pretty awesome. Blacephalon. Personally, one of my favorite Ultra Beasts. Self Destruct, Rock Blast, Shadow Claw, Mystical Fire is kind of cool, but I don't see it, anyone running it. Um, nothing really too big here. It's physical move pool got expanded quite a bit. Rock Blast is interesting because, uh, Blacephalon was interesting in that it had both high attack and high special attack. Um, but no one ever really ran physical. So now that it has rock coverage on the physical side, that's pretty interesting. Buzzwell got close combat and dual wing beat coaching darkest layer at high horsepower. Honestly, some pretty good buffs. It can hit, uh, why well, it was always able to hit psychic types with like its bug stab, but darkest layer, that's interesting. Uh, high horsepower is pretty good for boosting special defense with max quake. Uh, close combat is better than superpower, and dual wing beat is nice for max airstream. Carbink, um, nothing really too big here. I guess meteor beam is interesting, but this thing has always been more of a defensive Pokemon. Caracosta, nothing too huge. Cradilly, grassy glide, I guess, is pretty interesting. Meteor beam could be huge. Uh, nothing really great here. I got and I finally got power whip. That's pretty cool. Crobat, assurance, agility, crunch, hex, hurricane, and dual wing beat. Dual Wing Beat is interesting, you don't have to run Brave Bird anymore, but I think most people would probably go Brave Bird in the end. Uh, Cryogonal, Self Destruct, Icicle Spear, Avalanche Endure, Triple Axle, nothing notable there. Dragonite is going to be huge in this format. They actually buffed its ability Inner Focus, which makes it so uh, it can't get intimidated. On top of that, uh, Dynamax plus Multi Scale, something we haven't seen yet, so that's going to be really terrifying. I guess Shadow Shield on Lunaz like the equivalent on it, but still, on Dragonite, that's pretty huge. It's going to be probably one of the best. Um, Probably one of the best, I can't think of the name, weakness policy users. 
Fire Spin, Breaking Swipe, Hydro Pump, Mega Punch, uh, Mega Kick, Air Slash, Body Press, Dual Wing Beat, and Scale Shot. Really, Dual Wing Beat is probably the biggest buff here. Uh, Dual Wing Beat will allow this thing to actually hit things with Flying Stab, uh, which is pretty huge. I really like that Dual Wing Beat's a thing now. It's it's like a lower base power move than um, it's a lower base power move than Brave Bird. But what are you gonna do with Dragonite? He's not a bird. <laughs> Electivire, Weather Ball, Darkest Threat, Rising Voltage. Really, Darkest Threat's probably the biggest thing there. Nothing too huge though. Entei gets Helping Hand, Weather Ball, Agility, Flare Blitz, and Scorching Sands. Uh, I think with Entei, you're probably going to want to run the um, Sacred Fire, much like much like our uh, Ho-Oh. But yeah, Flare Blitz, I guess, is kind of cool. Helping Hand is kind of cool. Nothing really huge here. Garchomp, Breaking Swipe, Scorching Sands, Scale Shot. I could see Scale Shot being a thing. Swords Dance, Scale Shot once more. Uh, nothing too big there, though. Guzzlord, Mega Punch, Mega Kick, Body Slam, Amnesia, Endure, Heat Crash, High Horsepower, Body Press, Lash Out, and Steel Roller. Really, I think the biggest buff for this guy is probably going to be Steel Roller because it can now fight back versus Fairies, and it has a decently high, um, it has a decently high attack stat, so that's pretty interesting. Before you had to run like Heavy Slam to hit Fairies, and that was dependent on, <laughs> that was dependent on your um, weight, which wasn't always reliable. Heatran, Self Destruct, Body Slam, Heavy Slam, Heat Crash. Not really going to be that big for Heatran in my opinion. Body Press could be interesting. Burning Jealousy, Scorching Sands, and Steel Roller. I like Scorching Sands. Um, Earth Power is technically better, but I think Scorching Sands is interesting. Burning Jealousy, I don't think we're going to see too much because that's mostly for like Pokemon that don't hit as hard, like Torkoal, who really only hits hard with um, really only hits hard with like Eruption and stuff. So Heatran running Burning Jealousy could be a thing, but I don't really see it being too common over like Heat Wave or possibly Lava Plume. Or I guess not Lava Plume, that's not really common in VGC. Jinx, Icicle Spear, Psycho Cut, Psychic Train, Future Sight, Triple Axle, Expanding Force. I guess Expanding Force is pretty cool. Uh, Kabutops, Rock Blast, Psycho Cut. Rock Blast is pretty huge. I like Rock Blast. Uh, it no longer has to run Stone Edge. Cross Poison, Razor Shell. Ooh, actually Cross Poison is pretty huge. Leech Life is pretty huge. Meteor Beam, I don't, I don't really see being a buff, but yeah, that's, that's interesting. Latias gets Cycle Cut, Mystical Fire, that's pretty big, uh, it now has a fire option. Breaking Swipe, Agility, Tri-Tech, Baton Pass, Dragon Dance, Aura Sphere, Dueling Beat, and Scale Shot. Dragon Dance is kind of interesting, but eh. Uh, Aura Sphere is pretty big. Did it recent or did it previously get a fire step or a fire option? Let me think. I, I feel like it didn't. No, it didn't have a fire move before. Okay, just making sure. I was like, I feel like it did. Because they're dragons. I always feel like dragons get those. Latios, uh, essentially the same thing. Nothing really too big there. Wait, it looks like it's getting one less. What is it missing? Dragon Dance, uh, I guess. Didn't it already get Dragon Dance? I think so. Uh, Magmortar, Weather Ball, Mystical Fire, Burning Jealousy, Scorching Sands. Nothing really too big there. I believe Magmortar already got ground coverage. If not, I guess Scorching Sands is pretty big. Yeah, it already got ground coverage, but it was only on the physical side. It didn't get Earth Power, so yeah. Scorching Sands is pretty good for it. Um, Mesprit. Nothing really too big here. Draining Punch, or Drain Punch, Psycho Cut. Uh, really just Nasty Plot, Expanding Force. Nothing nothing too huge. Metagross, Psycho Cut, Cosmic Power, Brutal Swing, Expanding Force, Steel Roller, Meteor Beam. I could see special Metagross being a thing. Um, because Steel Beam... I'm pretty sure we saw it use Steel Beam in the trailer, so the Steel Beam should have been listed there. Uh, once again, this is like a leak, so it's not comprehensive list. It's based off a of data mine. Uh, Metagross, honestly, pretty terrifying in the format. I think it's going to be a great Dynamax Pokemon, but um, we have to see. We have to see. There are a lot of things that could check it, like Special Dragapult. Then again, uh, Weakness Policy Metagross is probably going to be really terrifying. <laughs> if it had a way of speed boosting, I'd be more terrified of it, though. Moltres, Hail. Why? Why does Moltres get hail? Weather Ball, Mystical Fire, Flare Blitz, Brave Bird, Burning Jealousy, Scorching Sands, Dual Wing Beat. Uh, nothing really big for Moltres here. Needle King, Sand Tomb, Mudshot, Rock Blast, Hex, High Horsepower, Body Press, Scorching Sands. It already got Earth Power, which is better. Uh, Needle Queen, essentially the same thing, except Needle Queen tends to be run more defensively, so maybe Body Press is huge. Raikou gets Helping Hand, Electric Terrain, Eerie Impulse, Scald. <laughs> Scald, actually, that's kind of cool. It can hit uh, ground types now. Uh, Aura Sphere, Weather Ball, and Rising Voltage. Uh, Rising Voltage could be interesting, but I feel like there are better Rising Voltage users in VGC. Regice now gets Heavy Slam. I guess that helps it defend versus Rock types, but you know it, it only has like 
so much it can do versus rock types. I don't really see it being that great, especially since it's so slow. Uh, Regigigas, it now gets protect. That's the biggest thing. Regigigas getting protect is huge. Before it didn't get protect, which is disgusting. But here's the thing. So Regigigas actually might be okay this format since you can run it next to Weezing. Uh, but slow start. For five turns, its attack and speed are halved. Considering you can run protect now, it didn't get protect previously. Now they can run protect, you can stall out those turns a little bit better. If, if, you're, if you're not running Weezing, you can actually stall out the turns a bit, and as a Dynamax Pokemon, it wouldn't be terrible. Like, a Jack button would be terrifying, and the fact that you can't switch it out without restarting the slow start is pretty bad, but now that it has Protect, it can actually do something in VGC, which is pretty huge. Before, you were like restricted to trying to skill swap it or entrain it, which was never that great. Body Slam, Endure, Heat Crash is pretty huge. Uh, Darkest Lariat, High Horsepower, Body Press, Terrain Pulse. I guess Body Press isn't too bad. I mean, it's got decently high defense. Um, yeah, body press could be interesting. If this thing, <laughs> if this thing didn't have slow start, it'd be terrifying. So running this thing next to Weezing might be, might actually be the play. Like choice ban Regigigas. Whew, I don't want to face that. Um, Regirock. Sand Tomb, Rock Blast, Flash Cannon, Heavy Slam, Body Press. Body Press is really, really big for Regirock because it has the highest defense of all the Regis at, uh, 200. So it, it's got like the strongest, uh, it's got the strongest um, body press out of all of them. So yeah, that could be interesting. I like it quite a bit. Reggie Steel, Heavy Slam, Body Press, Steel Roller, Meteor Beam. The only things that really matter. Um, I guess it's okay. I could see Heavy Slam being used, maybe Steel Roller. Body Press is also pretty good, considering this is like the, the Reggie with the least offenses at 75 at both. Relicanth, Rock Blast, Liquidation, Body Press, Meteor Beam, Scale Shot. Nothing really too big there. Salamence, Air Slash, Breaking Swipe, Hurricane, Dual Wing Beat, Scale Shot. Dual Wing Beat is the move that matters here. Salamence is now a lot more terrifying because it can actually hit things with Flying Stab. That does not require it to Dynamax and does not require it to have a Z move. So, Dual Wing Beat is going to be huge. I like that. Also, uh, Breaking Swipe after Intimidate is pretty big. Septile, Solar Blade, Cross Poison, Breaking Swipe, Dragon Dance, Grassy Glide, Scale Shot. More of a special attacker, nothing really too big here. Spirit Tomb. Hex, Phantom Force, Poltergeist, Lash Out. I guess Lash Out could be interesting, but Shiro Tomb's never been all that viable. Um, getting near the bottom of the list here. Suicune, Helping Hand, Weather Ball, Liquidation, Air Slash. I actually like Helping Hand quite a bit. Suicune's always been more defensive of the three uh, legendary beasts, so Helping Hand could be really, really useful. Swampert, Sand Tomb, Bulk Up, Darkest Lariat, High Horsepower, Liquidation, Body Press, and Swift. Nothing too huge there. Darkest Lariat's interesting, but nothing really big. Tyrantrum, Scary Face, Rock Blast, Assurance, Body Slam, Endure, Close Combat, Breaking Swipe, High Horsepower, Meteor Beam, Scale Shot, Lash Out. I guess Scale Shot's actually pretty big. Uh, however, in a VGC sense, it isn't that great. If we look at Tyrantrum, its main issue is its speed at 71. It's actually pretty threatening. Um, but I could actually see Scale Shot being a thing like you could run like Scale Shot to boost your speed and then maybe go for like Head Smash. Head Smash is really terrifying off this thing since it has Rock Head. Um, but I've never really been able to use Tyrantrum to create effect. Next up we have Yuxi, Drain Punch, Psycho Cut, Draining Kiss, Metronome, Tri-Attack, Baton Pass, Nasty Plot, Store Power, Play Rough, Expanding Force. Nothing nothing really great here. Yuxi's always just been like a worse Cresselia. Skip over the two uh, mythicals there. Wall Rain, Icicle, Icicle Spear, Swords Dance, Hydro Pump, Heavy Slam, Liquidation, Body Press, and Steel Roller. What's Wall Rain's attack stat? Let me look at this. 80 attack. I mean, maybe you could do some kind of Swords Dance shenanigans. I kind of like that Walrein got Swords Dance this gen. Uh, it could be a decent Dynamax Pokemon, I guess. I'm just, I'm just like, <laughs> I'm just speculating here, but maybe it could be okay. Lapras kind of outclasses it overall, even as a physical attacker, since you're gonna want to, you're gonna want to run uh, weakness policy on that anyways. Yeah, that could be interesting. Zergatry gets Endure, Electro Ball, and Rising Voltage. See, that's that's interesting. Um, none of those really matter in my opinion, since it can't set its own terrain. Here's what I really want to do with Zergatry that I cannot wait to do. And you're going to think I'm crazy, right? I want to run this. I want to run Hypnosis and Blunder Policy. Because <laughs> that's going to boost my speed, and the one thing Zergatry needs is speed. And then you could just start hitting things. Like, you could run, like, uh, Follow Me plus... Um, Follow me plus like Tail Glow. Tail Glow Zergatry was a thing in 2017, and I believe it got second place in Worlds. So like Follow Me, Tail Glow, Hypnosis, and then like Dazzling Gleam and Thunderbolt. That would be terrifying to face. That would be terrifying to face because if they miss that Hypnosis, you're gonna start getting Thunderbolted all over the place. And I can't wait to do that. 
Zapdos, uh, actually a huge buff to this thing. It gets Weather Ball, Eerie Impulse, Hail, Air Slash, Bray Bird, Hurricane, Rising Voltage, Dueling Beat. Hurricane is the biggest buff to Zapdos. Um, here, here's the reason why. Zapdos was the only one of the three birds that didn't get Hurricane, and that was for good reason. Because under Rain, it now has two of the most powerful stab moves in the game in Hurricane and Thunder, with 100% accuracy. And with this high of a special attack stat, I could see Zapdos being a really, really threatening Dynamax Pokemon, considering it's also like one of the bulkiest of the birds at, with a good... Um, with a good speed stat and a good special attack. So I would love to see uh, Dynamax Zapdos be a thing. I could see it being run with like Ice Shard weakness policy and that'd be terrifying. I I'm really excited to see what Pokemon come out in the new update, uh, What like where they find their place in the metagame. I'm super excited for that. If you guys wanna do me a favor, um, leave a comment down below and what you think is going to be huge in the next metagame, which we're getting the DLC in October 22nd, which isn't too far. It's about three weeks here. So yeah, do me a favor, leave a like in the video, comment down below your thoughts, uh, subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.